great to have you here at the beginning of the 2009-10 academic year. Uh, this is a time of eagerness and anticipation for students and faculty, the start of a new year of friendships, of academic attainment, and of service to others. You were invited because we have great confidence in you and in your potential for leadership, service, and support for your alma mater. We hope this will be a wonderfully enjoyable weekend for you, but it is also something of a boot camp for the next generation of Swanee's alumni leaders. The time is at hand for many of you to step forward in the tradition of the many who have gone before you, leaders such as William Spencer, whose generosity brought this splendid new science facility from a dream to reality. You have a heavy schedule for the weekend, and we hope that you will finish it with a better understanding of Swanee's challenges and opportunities, and your challenges and opportunities here at Swan as the first decade of the 21st century years is closed. As uh, Susan noted in her altogether too generous introduction, uh, my time as uh, Swanee's uh, Vice Chancellor is like this decade uh, on the wane. And this academic year will be full of occasions like this one, in which I'll be aware of its being the last one of its kind for me as Vice Chancellor. When I gave my last formal welcome to an entering class three weeks ago, the lump in my throat surprised me. And I expect there'll be a few more such lumps between now and June 30th when I'll turn the keys to the Vice Chancellor's office. As you know well, many of us have felt called to Swanee and blessed by the opportunity to teach, learn, and serve you. Chancellor Parsley and the Regents have made it abundantly clear that they expect the university and me to run at full throttle throughout this year. Uh, Claude Nielsen, the chair of the Board of Regents, who along with the Chancellor will finish his term next month, put it convincingly when he said, Joel, don't even think of acting like a lame duck. <laughs> This is a historic time for the university when we begin to think about the best time for the transition to the 16th vice chancellor. The economic downturn was not in sight in any way for any of us. We focused on the advantages of making the change a bit after the conclusion of one major fundraising campaign and a bit before the start of a new one. Uh, I was eager to leave office before wilting in it. And from my first step into the swamps of administration as a 29-year-old dean, I looked forward to getting back to being a full-time faculty member. So it is a happy prospect for truly and me to be headed to New York City for my first ever sabbatical leave in 2010-11, and then back to Swanee to serve on the faculty at least a few years before the wheels fall off of my academic wagon. <laughs> I hope that uh, from my happy faculty vantage point, I'll be able to keep up with the contributions many of you will make as you move into alumni leadership responsibilities in the years ahead. Those of us here on the mountain are working hard to sustain and strengthen the qualities that have distinguished the University of the South for over 150 years. Intense intellectual engagement among faculty and students, leadership for the community and nation, and for that matter, the world, and devoted service to the church. Now, Susan noted some of the enhancements in the university's programs and facilities that have been achieved in recent years. That progress owes a great deal to the contributions of those who led and served one in earlier years, especially Vice Chancellor Bob Ayers and Sam Williamson. 
And I look forward to splendid progress ahead under the 16th Vice Chancellor, who's being energetically sought by an outstanding search committee of trustees, regents, students, alumni, faculty, and staff, uh, chaired by former regent Joel Smith, a member of the class of 1967. Swanee's campus, its endowment, and its relatively strong financial position are the envy of many good colleges, seminaries, and universities. But we must never lose sight of the fact that our greatest assets are our people and our values. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Trudy and I are uh, grateful for the gifts Swanee's given us of allowing us to teach together. And one of the joys of our teaching is the generous support that Swanee students give one another. Two years ago, one of the members of our early morning calculus class was then freshman, now junior, Jonte Bouchard from Starkville, Mississippi. We were not sure how the class would work, how in particular it would work for her, uh, because she's blind. She has absolutely no sight. We never imagined communicating with charts, graphs, and symbols of calculus uh, to a blind student. But in the end, John Tate did spectacular in the class. And a large part of her success was made possible by the work of other students to be sure that she kept up with everything we did in the class. They used their fingers to translate figures from the chalkboard to her palm. They talked through homework problems with her. They listened and learned as she perceived aspects of the material that they had missed. In the end, the whole class was more successful than we could hope. And we have another example of how learning at Swan is often a team effort. 